Welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning into Point of View. I am your host, Amanda Johnson. And on this segment, we are going to talk about the Cogdell versus Wet Seal case. So stay tuned. Tell me, what's your point of view? It is your view. Point of view, point of view. What's your point of view? Tell me what's your point of view? What's your point of view? Tell me. What's your point of view? It is your view. Point of view, point of view. What's your point of view? It's time to hear from you. Welcome to Point of View. Welcome back. We are here with Nicole Cogdell and past overseer, Jay Harrison. Thank you so much for taking time out to talk with us today. Bless you. Thank you. Overseer Jay Harrison, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm Overseer Jay Harrison, uh, Overseer of the Eastern District Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship under our presiding bishop of uh, Full Gospel, which is Bishop Paul S. Morton, and our state bishop, Bishop Stanley K. Smith. And I'm in my ninth uh, annual celebration of pastoring here in the city of Chester, True Vine Missionary Full Gospel Baptist Church, a church that my father had founded over 25 years ago, just moving back from Williamsburg, Virginia, where I served two terms as the mayor or the chairman of the board of the Board of Supervisors. And when my father passed, I moved back to basically take over the ministry and uh, serve here in the city. Okay, where is your church located? Uh, 701 Morton Avenue in the city of Chester, Pennsylvania. We're on the east side of town. Right, that's awesome. Hey, Sister Cogdell. Hi, Amanda. How are you? I am awesome. Talk to us about um, your history. Yes, I um, am a native of Philadelphia. I've worked as a parent advocate for students with special needs for over 20 years. Um, I am the mother of one 26-year-old um, young man who's absolutely awesome. My mother's only child, so... And I am a new resident of the city of Chester, currently a community liaison for Mayor John Linder. Okay, that's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> now, currently, you've recently um, had a case. Um, what was the name? Uh, share with us the, the overall basic details of the case. Okay, I um, was the lead plaintiff for what would have been a class um, action suit which was called um, Cogdell versus Wet Seal. And um, Cogdell versus Wet Seal started back in um, 2008. I was the store manager for the Springfield Wet Seal. And Wet Seal is the junior apparel retail store for young women. And um, I was then promoted in January of 2009 to the King of Russia Wet Seal. Okay, what is, um, you said it's a clothing line? It's a clothing store, How yes. large is um, the Wet Sale Company? Um, the company has 550 stores nationwide. Okay, wow, that's awesome. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, I was promoted to the King of Pressure store, and the senior vice president came in one day for a visit and said that's the store manager that she wanted somewhere, someone with um, blonde hair and blue eyes. And now that my hair color has changed, you know, a lot <laughs> of people, the blue, yes, the yes, I, I hear that all the time. But, you know, regardless of what my hair color was, um, I took a store that was um, 400, it was like 400, it was between 460th to 480th to number eight in the company. How long were you employed? Um, I was previously employed 12 years prior and um, decided to come back to Wet Seal. So at that time, I had been there for three months. But in that short period of time, I was able to turn around not just one store, but two stores, as well as being supportive to um, my store and other stores with, within my district. Um, was very successful. I felt that um, I could do a lot for... Um, the company and you know unfortunately um, I was greeted with that comment and um, a few days later I received an email that said that African Americans dominate huge issue 
and the only thing that was wrong with my store was that the manager was not the right fit. Mm. Now, was that email intentionally sent or accidentally sent? Um, I had a, a guardian angel who provided me with that email and a couple other things um, because, you know, that person felt that, that my character, my integrity, and, you know, I had a really good solid team because, I mean, you're only as good as your team. So although, you know, the store rose to, you know, um, great heights, it was because of the fact that I had some really great, I had a very great staff. Okay. Um, and um, that did some amazing things. So the concern wasn't the production of the store, it was just who was in front of that operation. Absolutely, because the email itself, I mean, it said that the, the fixture package was fantastic. I mean, literally, Amanda, you could eat off of the floor. I mean, every pair of jeans was folded. I had um, males. I had females. I, I had people who had disabilities. I had. I mean, basically, it was a very diverse staff, and um, we were a team. And basically, you know, although I was the store manager, whatever I asked um, any of the staff to do, I was willing to do as well, from cleaning the toilets to changing light bulbs to doing whatever. And I think that's what made us great because a, a, a great leader has to be willing to serve first. Correct. Now, from the time that you um, received that information, what happened after that? Basically, I contacted a, um, Human Resources and um, I was unable to speak to one of the people that was on the telephone because um, she had circulated, um, well, a document had been circulated stating that um, one of her comments was that every time an African American touched the counter, they became pregnant. So I didn't feel comfortable with having a conversation with her. So I asked to speak to um, someone else in, in human resources and did and basically put them on notice and said that you know we need some changes needed to take place um, at the same time filed a um, complaint with the EEOC and when I went back to wet seal unfortunately the changes had not been made um, the, the staff was not addressed because it took me a week um, I, I went out medically for a week because, I mean, just imagine, you know, changing a store around, you know, um, doing overnights and whatever it took to be in compliance and then to be greeted like that. So when I, when I arrived back, it happened to be my birthday weekend with a birthday that year, um, I decided that, you know, this was not the company that, that I needed to work for. Um, because I was looking for a company that, you know, was, was very diverse and judged people um, based on their performance and, and not based on any race. Okay, now um, when you came back, were there um, just a specific, um, were they African Americans, African Americans and Caucasians that were kind of being, offended? Yeah. Yes, and I just didn't feel that I was. I, I, well, let me rephrase that. I was not going to be in a position to speak for anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, that was the job of human resources, not for me. I, I didn't say it. I treated everybody equal, and I made it very clear that when I when, when I returned back to work, that I was not going to deal with any question. I wasn't going to answer any questions, nor would I deal with any level of discrimination. Exactly. But by then, I had already filed. Um, a charge with the EEOC. Okay. So share with us um, how did the case go? Um, was it a, a struggle the whole time? Did you have any moments where you had peace? Share with us that. Um, I had a vision about the case um, prior to. You know, God um, wanted me to be very obedient. I had to watch what I said, <laughs> what, what, you know, what I was saying. You know, I had to watch who I had within my inner circles. I mean, he strategically, literally, um, told me what to do. I remember going on vacation and literally um, being told to purchase a journal. And I purchased a journal. 
and literally every single thing that I wrote in the order that I wrote it, whether it was about me or somebody else, God blessed in that exact order. It, 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 now to go back and look at the book that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's like, wow, God, this was just absolutely um, incredible. But, you know, this case was just not a case that took over, that, that happened overnight. It took three years for the EEOC to even investigate. Um, we did not, I didn't get a ruling until after we had filed in the courts. Um, under the old Civil War statute. And then, you know, I, I could have opted out and said, okay, you know, I don't want you EEOC to continue the investigation. I wanted them to to, to continue the investigation. I wanted, I, I needed to know what the final conclusion was. Right. And um, it came back favorable, you know, because it was a couple times, well, she quit. And, you know, when the EEOC said, yes, she did quit. But not only did she quit, you created a hostile work environment. Mm -hmm. She had every right to quit, and that was the part that, that had been missed. And then in the midst of all of this, um, anybody that knows me knows that I'm extremely close to my grandmother. And um, I started off on um, Thanksgiving um, losing uh, Ruth Burnett. Mm -hmm. I called her my shimmy shake. Mm -hmm. um, she had a stroke. and. Um, I was one of the people who, who took care of Shemi, you know, when she encouraged me and I encouraged her. And then Gran would come down and spend time with us because Gran could walk and Shemi could walk a little bit, you know. And then it was Madison. Um, he gets too fed and, you know, he's he, he's, um, he has cortical vision impairment and um, microcephaly. So I was taking care of a whole lot of people or yeah. at least they were taking care of me. Yeah. And... Um, from there, you know, um, September of 2012, Graham passed. Okay. And um, in the midst of all these interviews, mm -hmm. having to say goodbye to my grandmama, Amanda, you know, people just, that they, they see the wet seal part of it and, mm -hmm. you know, all the rest of the parts of it. But, but my grandma, I'm the love of my life, the one who, you know, they said she had Alzheimer's and dementia, just put her in a home and we went to, Donnie McKirkland's concert together and we prayed together and we worshiped together and she was the love of my life and God now in the midst of all of this I gotta say, I gotta say bye to her and then in March my father who I can now say was not my biological father he was my mother's next door neighbor. And when I was young, I was going blind. And my mother couldn't afford to take me to the hospital. So she was going to walk from 53rd and Chester Avenue all the way down to Will's Eye. And my dad said, James Nettles, I got to shout him out. <laughs> he says, girl, get in that car with that baby. <laughs> and from then, <laughs> He and my godmother and my mom took care of me. And and now, God, now you saying my dad. Mm -hmm. And then, all right, I got I to gotta take care of my Karen because she's fighting cancer. And Karen, you can get through this. And every Monday we would go to our favorite thrift store. Mm -hmm. And last month, Karen. So this hasn't quite been a walk in the park, but... When all of it started off, that scripture, I can do all things mm -hmm. yes. through Christ who strengthens me. And then this church called True Vine in mm -hmm. Chester is sitting on the corner <laughs> with, yeah. with Pastor Harrison and First Lady Crystal Harrison. You see their photo right out there. And they didn't even know it at the time. You know, I, I had came across Pastor Jay and... And, and First Lady a couple times, and I would sit outside the church because I just felt like if I could just get the true vine, I could feel just a, 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 I know I was close to heaven. Mm -hmm. And I was going to a different church yes. at that time, and yes. it was no way to disrespect that church. But it was just this pulling, just this, I, I, I got to get in true vine, and 
you know, I remember the day that I joined Tr Trufon. Everything, every obstacle, the train was late. I was in Philly. The shoes that I had on, I had blisters on the bottom of my feet mm. trying to get here because I said, you know what? The bus is not going fast. I'm just going to walk. I got, I got to get there. I got to get there. And I got here late. And Pastor Jay didn't even know. And I'm walking down that aisle because I knew that you know, it, I had to get to True Vine, yes. that, 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 that my destiny, that my next level, mm -hmm. the hitting the nations was going to be right here. Mm -hmm. and, and when Pastor was prophesizing and, 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 and he said, you know, you, that sojourner truth, that spirit of sojourner. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, a week later, um, receiving the sojourner truth award by the National Congress of African American Women, the Delco chapter. Mm -hmm. it. It, it, it's it been an amazing, amazing um, process because God told me, you know, it's just, it's time to grow up. Mm -hmm. Now, I done put some amazing people yeah. before you, but you, but you got to grow up, and, 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 and I've assigned you to do this. And I remember 15 years ago picking up this book saying, I want to be an African-American historian. I well, just I didn't, didn't know, know what you were saying. <laughs> Woo! I said, boy, I didn't know what picking up that the, these women was some, some serious things, you know. Yeah. And um, I'm blessed. So the award, the Sojourner Truth Award, kind of just fell into place mm -hmm. with the prophecy of Overseer and with your new title, the... <laughs> The Rosa Park of Chester. Yeah. Now, can you believe that? <laughs> when you heard that, you know, you received that title, the Rosa Park of Chester, what was going through your mind? Well, you know what? I, I mean, New York is giving me the same claim. I'm going to New York next week. So I, I was like the Rosa Parks of Chester. I said, whoa, you know, th th this is this is pretty heavy, you know, but at the same time, I'm honored. I'm, I'm so very proud to be a African American woman. You know, my mother, you know, told me years ago and I never really understood it. You you come from that Harriet Tubman stock girl. You know, they mm. couldn't catch her and they can't catch you. And I'm like, well what just be light on your feet? And I'm like, what is she this woman is going nuts. What is she talking about? And then, you know, hearing about, you know, um, Rosa, learning about Sojourner and how she fought for, you know, women's rights and, and racial equality and some of the struggles, you know, as women, sometimes we can get caught up in the catty yes. stuff, mm -hmm. but we have to learn how to start to celebrate each other yes. mm -hmm. because until we do that, you know, we can't talk about the young folks when we we can't die to our flesh every single day. I want to be able to celebrate you, Amanda. I want you to be able to celebrate yes. me. Yes. Because when we get to that level, then really we can start real, true kingdom building. Right. True right. kingdom. Right. Definitely. Now, has um, any changes been made at Wet Seal since oh, the abso case? Absolutely. Wet Seal has a new CEO. Um, that as well as new members of the board. Um, they have um, regional human resource directors um, as a result of it where before they did not. They have a council, a diversity council um, that meets to continue just to have conversations in terms of um, improving wet seal. Um, the LDF fund, which is a part of the NAACP, monitors just to make sure they um, report EEO1 um, findings in terms of um, race and gender and different classifications. Um, everybody in the store is receiving true diversity training. So, you know, Cogdell versus Wet Seal, myself along with, um, it started off the Wet Seal trio and then we became the quad. Um, <clears throat> Women have made a difference, and, and I really don't believe that even Chester to a certain extent, because I read some things on the blog, okay, Nicole did this, you know, now let's move on. I don't think that they really understand the significance. You know, it's colleges that study in Cogdell versus Wet Seal now. And, you know, I, although a Philadelphia native, 
you know, which I could have said, you know, Nicole Cogdell from Philadelphia. I was proud to say that I was from Chester. And, you know, and, and I say this being humble. I feel that Chester needs to be proud of me now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You stood. You stood in the midst of trials. Um, and because of you going through this trial and you had rocks in your life, so God forgot to adjust those rocks in you're in the right mind. You're clothed and in your right mind. So I know that you gave credit to um, True Vine for helping, you know, strengthen you. So that right there speaks volume because some people may not have made it in their right mind out of that situation. And, and, and True Vine providing me with this and not even knowing. You know, Overseer Jay Harrison, is, he, he's hearing a story for the first time, a lot of parts of it today. You know, First Lady, you know, she she didn't even know what was, you know, what was going on. He, I had to remind him today. You know, we're being taped, and he's like, "Oh, okay, all right." You know, this is his ninth anniversary. I'm supposed to be celebrating him, and he's taping with me. You know, right, right. they did not. No. That is so awesome. So we are actually going to take a break. And then when we come back, we're going to hear from Overseer Jay Harrison. Weddings, church events, stage plays, commercials, music videos, and more. Visions Video, where we video your vision. Check us out at www.getvisionsvideo.com or email us at visionsvideo at comcast.net. It's time to hear from you. Welcome to Point of View. Welcome back. Now, Overseer Jay Harrison, Sister Cogdell has said that, you know, she was sitting on the step. You guys didn't know. But there are going to be a lot of people out there that will say, he knew, he knew that might come up. Now, did you really know that, you know, she was going through that? Absolutely not, Amanda. Uh... Honestly, today, I really got a better understanding of actually what the whole case is about, what she's been going through. All, all I knew that there was a young lady in contact with my wife, and my wife would say, First Lady, Elder Crystal, uh, that we're interceding for this young lady, and you've met her a few times in passing. And because of my background in government, uh, I'm very, I like to get very involved in city uh, government and community development. And so I've gone to a lot of the town meetings and tried to get involved. I don't want to just be a church inside the box. I want to get involved. And through getting involved, um, this worker bee is what I would call her. Yeah. I would tell my wife, now there's, there's, there's a lady over there and she's the hub. I don't know what she does, but she's the hub because everybody runs to her. Right. And so try to get a hold of her. She can let you know what we need to do. Because I turned the community involvement piece over to a few of my members because I still got to get on my face before the Lord and lead the church in the other aspects of this church. But we need to be a part of the community. Well, Nicole, um, in passing, she was sort of that liaison. She was the leader of the group meetings, and she kind of coordinated everything. So I knew my wife and Nicole would eventually rub shoulders because my wife is very interested in education and so forth down the line. Uh, I had no clue uh, the magnitude of what she was going through, yeah. but I did know that I was praying for someone who I never met uh, in the aspect of coming into church. Right. Uh, my wife at night, she's very tacky, she would wake me up, we need to pray, or uh, Nicole's checking on us to see if we're okay. I'm like, who? <laughs> You know, because, you know, we live here in Chester, and oftentimes you have gun violence and things of that nature. And my wife all of a sudden had this advantage of information. You know, she would never be able to tell me what was going on. She said, no, I don't want you to do this today because just be careful. And she said, we're interceding on behalf of someone. Mm -hmm. That's the depth, the breadth of what I knew Nicole was going through. Uh, my wife began to say, she calls us. Her pastor, you're my pastor, you're my first lady. I said, okay, well, a lot of folks in the city right. uh, that I help. Um, they don't naturally go to our church, but I do consider them my members. They're not active tithing members here. They probably don't give here. 
But God didn't call me to a box. Mm. He called me to the city. And so I, I don't try to tread on anyone else's turf. I, you know, I encourage people to go to their church. But I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to help you in any way I can. A lot of this today really is just me filling in. My wife, I'm, I'm sitting in her seat today. Okay, and so she's really uh, the person that has, you know, kind of locked arms uh, with Nicole. I'm, I'm sort of that hidden ministry. I'm an intercessor. That's something that I do passionately. And so we pray from behind the scenes. Um, it's for the first time ever hearing that she was on our steps. Wow. See, I didn't even know that she, you know, felt confident enough to come in the gate and walk in and sit on the steps. But I've heard people do that before, feeling that True Vine was sort of like a lighthouse. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you're at um, Avenue of the States, there's a, a newsstand uh, sitting right in the, in the sort of the intersection. If you look down past the police station, you can see this building. And I consider it a lighthouse on this side of town. We feed hundreds of people in the city that don't come to our church. I mm -hmm. shut down my church one Sunday and uh, in June, two years ago, and we didn't have service. We went and did serving. We went out into the community. We raised an offering. We gave it away. Um, we cut grass. We picked up trash. We gave away food. We gave away hundreds of bags of groceries. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want anybody to come to my church. It wasn't about trying to get members. Mm -hmm. It was about trying to show folks the love of Jesus is real. Too many of us come in a box, but nobody feels anybody inside the box. So to me, it's a testimony. It's, a, it's, a, it's an honor. I'm humbled to hear mm -hmm. someone felt like they could come on these grounds, not get a hold of me. Right. Uh, you know, too many superstars in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Not get a hold of me. Not get a hold of First Lady. Though we're, 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 we're reachable. I was like that in office. I didn't like, I, I believe in staff and having folks around. You have to screen some people. But I believe a, a shepherd should be touchable should be reachable. You know, you get in trouble for that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You don't know when to say no and who to tell to, to stand back. And you, but at the same time, he called me to care for people. And my heart is overwhelmed, you know, when I hear her pain, when I hear the things that she went through. Uh, I'm happy that when God looked for an intercessor that I didn't roll over and say, I don't know her. Yes. She don't go to my church. Right. You know, now, you know, I didn't know what was going on and what, what, it, what she ended up coming into, all that kind of, I didn't know that. All I knew was that a person needed us to pray. Yes. And that's what we did. And that's, that's what I know about Nicole. And that what I saw in her is a leader. Mm. I saw her working. And so I never put the two and two together right. because she didn't seem like a person going through a storm. But that's what suffering mm. is supposed to look like. Yes. You know, most people will look at me, they can't tell, I'm blind. And that I don't, I can't see. Right. Uh, they don't see me walking around with my head down. When I, I love to worship, so when I'm worshiping, I worship hard. But that's what suffering mm -hmm. is supposed to look like. I, I have a phrase: "Be careful at what you see." Even my spiritual mother, Pastor Kim Davis, she, mm -hmm. she can give her a shout out. She'll say, "Be careful <laughs> at what you see, because wow. what you see might mess you up." Yes, it's it's a testimony because you um, could not see her. Physically, yes, right. you could only see her spiritually, right. and you spoke to that. Yes. So being led by God to, um, for anybody, because you didn't know her, right. that's a testimony to just to being able to be led by God, and you never know what God right. is going to do. <laughs> right. So I know you're sitting here like, wow, right, right. thank you, Lord, <laughs> that you know, because when sometimes when you see things, you're like, okay, she looks like she's well dressed she looks like she's well groomed maybe right. that's somebody right. that needs to be a member right. but because you never even had to consider that right you definitely can give glory to god for right. this situation right Absolutely. so and amanda you know i i even want to say to you because mm -hmm. a couple people called and asked for me to um interview but it was something special about you and god is going to take you to some really mm -hmm. really really great heights you just wait mm -hmm. you just wait God is definitely moving. Yes, um, yes. I want to encourage you because what you went through opened up doors for somebody else. That those employees that are still at Wet Seal will benefit from your struggle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And 
overseer said you made it look good. Yes. <laughs> yes. He's like, that's what struggle is supposed to look like. It's yeah. like fasting. It's like you're not supposed to walk around right. doing gloom. Just keep right. like I'm doing it for the Lord and he kept you. Right. Yes. Even in the and you know that it was God because even though in the midst of him moving some of your rocks in your life you still held on. Right. Absolutely. Right. And and as my grandmother would say, I'm going on the glory. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> going on the glory. Right. So, right. you know, I and I'm I, I'm thankful. I am thankful for having a praying grandmother, a praying family, you know, and and instilling God first. Mm. And that's why through this whole experience and will continue mm. um to be humble. Yes. Humility means a lot. Now, has the case officially settled? The case has officially settled. However, we still, because some people think when you settle, oh, God, that big old check and mm -hmm. stuff like that, it still has to go through a process. Mm -hmm. um, you, it, do I plan to bless people? Yes. But they're going to the, be the people who have been a blessing in my life mm -hmm. and um, who, who have stood the storm with me. Right. Definitely understand that because... Too much is given, much is required. Absolutely. But God has already kept you, and I know that he will continue to keep you. Uh, we, I just want to thank both of y'all. Thank you. Both of thank you all you. for taking the time out to talk with us, to share with us. I know that God is in the midst of this situation, and he's not finished yet. Right. So Absolutely. even just in the midst begin. of moving, mm -hmm. we just pray that a God's speed, God's grace, God's mercy, and God's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding would always be with all of us. Yes. And whatever is coming next, as long as God is in it, it's going to be all right. And Amanda, may I just, you know, um, just, I mean, to, for my family, for my friends, for First Lady Harrison, for, you know, different women, even behind the scenes. I, I really don't want to name names because of their level of privacy and would go on viral sometimes. I just want to say thank them for, for the ones that did my hair and makeup. It was one that was very, and, and, and you know, provided rides and just prayed for me. I mean, God really put a group of people that was just very awesome. You know, my mom. My mom, you know, my mom has been absolutely phenomenal um, through this whole process. So thank you. Weddings, church events, stage plays, commercials, music videos, and more. Visions Video, where we video your vision. Check us out at www getvisionsvideo.com or email us at visionsvideo at comcast.net It's time to hear from you. Welcome to Point of View. Hello everyone. We are back again with Overseer Jay Harrison and it is actually his ninth church anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank Pastor. You. Thank you, Nicole. And his church is actually the, the former location of the Youth in Action building where I remember coming here as a child with different activities. Overseer, do you, can you give us some additional history about this building? Sure, sure. And like you said, it was, it was formerly uh, Youth in Action, actually before Youth in Action, I, I believe it was a part of the Chester Upland School District. It was an elementary school. Uh, one of the pastors in my fellowship actually worked here in administration during that elementary school. And before then, there was some research done. It was actually a college uh, in its first inception, its first uh, uh, creation of this, this property. Uh, so this, this building has a lot of history in education. Uh, and uh, we took it over when uh, Tommy Lee Jones, who was the CEO, director, founder of Youth in Action, became a member of my father's church. His former church was Unity Baptist on 6th and Parker Street. When he left there and came here, she was a member here, and she literally just believed in the vision of the visionary at that time, my father, the late Bishop James L. Harrison, and basically seeded the ministry, this building, into the ministry. I believe, if my memory serves me correct, one dollar. <laughs> wow, she just fun. blessed the man of God. She believed in his vision and um, just seated this, this building into the ministry. And ever since, this building has been basically a lighthouse in this city. We feed, uh, you name it, we have a program going now. It's a brand new program. Give it a plug out. City of Promise. 
where we're teaching young people. You know, we have a big problem in our city with really uh, meeting the needs of at risk. I'm not talking about the young people that are on the edge. I'm talking about young people that are at dead ends that need a skill, a trade, and that's what we do here every Tuesday and Thursday. We teach them the building and trades, and this is sort of like this old house. Mm -hmm. They're renovating this building. They're learning how to do the trade, and uh, one of our members is actually the CEO of that uh, uh, nonprofit uh, called City of Promise, and so this ministry is constantly meeting the needs of people, keys for change. You just say it, name it, we do it. My, my wife, uh, First Lady Elder Crystal, she's preaching out today on my anniversary, so ministry never stops, amen. But we're just excited about this celebration, and nine being uh, birthing, you know, nine, that, that full term, time to give birth. And I just believe that, Nicole, in your life, and Amanda, just meeting you two, great women of God, uh, and in this season, God is birthing new things. And so I just thank you uh, for just being here today uh, as we celebrate. Well, this is definitely awesome, a building that has so much history of sharing and caring and supporting. And I know that God is going to continue to use you to continue to be that lighthouse in the city of Chester. Amen. Well, let me let me do this before I get in trouble. i got to give my mama a yes. shout out. <laughs> right, she mom. was also the former pastor before I took over when my father passed away, and that's Pastor Meredith, Leslie Harrison. She's known as the lady that feeds everybody. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And so Amen. just want to give her a shout out because uh, she's still living and still with us in ministry. And so not only being her son, but now I'm her pastor. And uh, it's just an honor to serve uh, in this city. Amen. That is definitely awesome. And we'll be right back. It's time to hear from you. Welcome to Point of I'm Overseer J.T. Harrison, and thank you once again for joining us uh, on Point of View. And before we close out, Amanda and uh, Nicole, I just want to thank you uh, for this opportunity and uh, what this is going to do to women uh, and for women of all ethnic backgrounds, all colors, and people in general all across this world when we stand for righteousness, when we stand up for our values. Uh, I want to I want to leave you with this encouraging word because I believe this is the season that we're in. I believe we're in a season where we have to learn how to live the best life now, and with that, oftentimes it takes standing for what's right, making a righteous decision. And with that, I just want to encourage you: doing the right thing is not the best thing; it's the only thing to do. There's no other options to that. And when you do that, you're walking what I believe is by faith and giving your faith a job. And I, I'm, I'm very encouraged by you, Nicole, and I'm very excited to meet you, Amanda. And to all of you out there, when you give your faith a job, expect to see what you believe God has promised you, and it will happen. What's your point of view? It is your view. Point of view, point of view. What's your point of view? Tell me what's your point of view? What's your point of view? Tell me. What's your point of view? It is your view. Point of view. Point of view. What's your point of view? It's time to hear from.